Hello. As you can see, I'm in the corner of the screen of my PowerPoint slide, and I'm going to be presenting this on Teams here, on Zoom up here, and on Google Meets over here as well. So on all of these apps, I'm going to be featured in this feature, and this is actually a PowerPoint feature called Cameo. So you can put a Cameo on any slide, you can have it move, so if you need more space on this slide, for example, you can move it to the other side, and you can get Morph to transition quite nicely. I find these can be a little bit tacky, so I, uh, I tend to do the ones that are rectangles or squares uh, rather than the ones that are elsewhere. You can take yourself off for a little bit if you want. So this is one of the many ways that you can actually be inside what you present in your online meetings. So we're going to go through that in this video, mostly focusing on PowerPoint's Cameo feature, because that you do on PowerPoint directly, and then it pushes out to the other apps. We're also going to look at a feature that exists within Teams and one that exists within Zoom. By the way, the content of my slide is a presentation that I gave earlier this week about COVID in Cambodia. It has not much to do with the content of this video. And you can even copy and paste your Cameos. Yay, maybe? Who's going to do this? Anyway, my name is David Benayim and I hope you liked this video. I make weekly content on PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, using Tech of the Workplace that I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you want more content on this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. I'm going to stop sharing on all of these different applications, which I definitely am sharing on all of these applications. I'm logged into a meeting on all of them, not using my camera. And that is key because if your camera is used inside PowerPoint, then your camera must be turned off when you're using the other apps. So in PowerPoint, now if you have the newest version, Office 365, in Insert, you have this thing called Cameo. Cameo will insert a video camera, it is off by default and looks like this. And there are different things you can do with it. You can use it in Designer. Designer will give you some ideas of where to put it. You can switch it on like that and then see where it goes. But uh, you can also edit it in the camera format. For me, I tend to just put it here on the bottom right, right of each screen, unless there's a reason why I can't put it in there. Like in this case, if I had it on the bottom right, then I would cover my content, so that's no good. And that's why I put it here. And you get lots of the tools you can do with images or with shapes here. You can, for example, crop it. This is probably the most useful one. You can resize it, you can bring it forward, send it to the back, um, put other stuff, for example, there as well. And you can change the shape and add borders and effects. These, I think, are pretty tacky. You can even add animations the same way you can in PowerPoint regular. But again, those, I think, are pretty tacky. Um, the only thing that, as I said, I would do is probably crop it. And that can be quite nice because, let me switch it on here. You can see it's just cropped around where I'm going to be, which is quite nice. And that's good if you have slides with content that you're going to cover up. Uh, the ones that are here in circles with the shadow edges, I don't think are that useful. Maybe circle is okay, but there's definitely lots of unnecessarily tacky stuff that allows you to do this thing. Yeah, you can even customize to get absolutely any shape that you want. But why would you honestly do this? I'm not so sure. What you do want to do if you move it around, though, is apply the morph transition. Morph is a fantastic thing that just goes from one slide to another. I have a whole video on morph. For example, here I have cases per million, and here I have it as well. So if I apply Morph to that slide, then it can transition everything in that slide. So it just gives you a smoother transition when you're presenting online. So this is the version of the slide show without Cameo. So if I go to Insert Cameo, I put it here. And then I would want to copy it, let's exit out of Designer, and paste in every slide. Annoyingly, you have to do this one by one. So if you do want it to appear in the same consistent place every time, then you do have to add it one by one. And you should keep note of when you are going to cover up content. Uh, you can take a break from a slide if you want to, of course, by deleting it there. That might be something that you choose if you are going to cover up content. So that's pretty much Cameo. I'm not going to go through all the crazy animations that you can do with it, but it's pretty much the same as other PowerPoint features. And they are improving it over time. So what's the space for how it will improve? So if you do want to use the record feature, this is also pretty new, you can click on there and it does actually use it based on where Cameo is. As you can see, it does the morph transition like that in place as well. Uh, you can, with the recorder view, choose whether to show or blur background, which is kind of cool. Uh, not available currently with when you're just doing it in slideshow mode. 
and you can choose a different view with these things. So the teleprompter view is also new and this will look at your notes and just record what you're seeing here. Uh, yeah. I would say, however, that if you are using a transition between slides, it doesn't smoothly happen between the slides because each recording is put in in that particular slide. So it is something that uh, hopefully will happen soon at some stage. So I'm going to exit out of this, this new recording studio view. And also let me then share my screen. So the way that I tend to share my screen is to go into slideshow mode in PowerPoint itself and then go into the other application that I'm sharing to. So here, for example, and I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to choose to share the window. And this is how it works the best. It does freeze you like this. So you have to click out and then it is sharing you like normal. So be aware of that, that it is going to show you frozen. And especially if you have um, other stuff that you're doing on your screen, that's not taking up this, then you could be frozen as well. But it is pretty cool how it allows you to show it in the other apps. So this is the Cameo feature. But as I said, there are a couple of other features within the different apps that allow you to share your screen and they have different advantages. So here in Zoom, I'm going to first switch on my camera. Hello, with a virtual background. And I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share in advanced PowerPoint as a virtual background. So it, is, it has your recent items. I'm going to choose that one. Here I am. So here it's not Cameo, but I can essentially put myself as I need to go. And I can adjust the size. I can put myself wherever I go. I quite like this feature because you're able to essentially go through your slides um, using this technique and you're always going to be there. And if in one time you do need to readjust, then you can adjust on the fly, which I quite like. You don't have to adjust all everything beforehand. So this other feature in Teams, which I quite like, is in the share. And then you have these four options. Now, it is actually really difficult to show this in a demo because for some reason, when I'm recording my screen, it doesn't come out. So I've tried and failed a bunch of times. I'll do the best that I can. So I'm going to click on this one, stand out. This is definitely my favorite. So here you go. So it does pop up with this that you can see the object that I'm moving around. This, you can minimize it, but if I release it with a mouse, then the recording software that I'm using will not show it to you. So let me do some stuff and then I'll come back to it. So now you can see I can adjust the size and I can put it on the myself on the other side. And I am just sharing a internet browser screen, but I could be sharing absolutely any content. So that's the difference between this one and Zoom. Zoom, you can only do it on a PowerPoint presentation. Teams, you can do it on absolutely any app, which is kind of cool. There are different views that you can do as well. Let me show you those. So this is something called side by side view. You can edit the background as well. I don't really love this. I don't see the point. I wish the background was just blank because it's pretty messy. You can change the position as well, like last time. This is the reporter view that they call where you are super big and your content is really, really small in comparison. Uh, but I'm going to switch the size and you're going to see how it changes. There you go. So you can make your content even smaller. And again, you have this background that you can customize. So I'm going to exit out of this. By the way, this screen that I'm showing you right now, this is only available to you if you want to see it. You can minimize it using a uh, top right menu quite easily. And then you would just see your screen. So your audience would see you, but you would just see your screen. That's how you would have most of your experience with this. And just to show you when you share your screen within these four, you can change your background like that. These are the defaults. Uh, that you can choose between. I personally don't see the point in it. I just wish it was a non-messy black background, which adds little noise to the rest of your content. But yeah, this is what it is. So my name is David Benayim, and if you like this video, then I have tons of videos on PowerPoint, Excel, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want to see this kind of content. Oh, a couple final things. You can do this on absolutely any meeting app with Cameo. So Google Meets as well, just in the same way or whatever you might be using. And lastly, um, PowerPoint Cameo is only available in for the Office 365 subscribers. And that is as of the August channel. So to check if you have it, go to PowerPoint file and then account. Then if you see 2208 or another version, 22 being the year 2022 and 08 being the month of August. If you see that or a newer version, then you should have this feature. If you don't have it, then it will be coming to you very soon. If you're an Office 365 subscriber. Thanks for watching.